Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC events. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have the Vice President of Product Development, Mr. Noah Bethel, with us. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And Noah, Happy New Year. It is a new year, 2020. 2020. Uh, hopefully, you're, you bring you brought in the new year quite nicely, and uh, our customers have brought in the new year for us as well. They, they don't stop. They've delivered this uh, nice uh, case study to us. Automotive manufacturer finds multiple broken rotor bars. I guess that should tell you what we're looking for here. It's a giveaway. But this one, instead of using current signature analysis or fifth harmonic or inrush startup, uh, we're looking at it through trending average inductance. Yeah, which is great because not always do you have access to running motors, although we'd like to see that correlation. There are times you don't have access. So this is the nameplate information. There's nothing really jumps out at us. It's a 460 volt. It's 100 horsepower, so a lot of places, these are throwaway items. So true. But in this situation, this is a 30-year-old motor. You can't throw it away. They don't make them anymore, so you have to work with what you have. The unique design requires repair versus replace, absolutely. All right, so it's a four-pole. So... This is what they first, they took the baseline and they see a 40% inductive imbalance. 40% is crazy high. Even in a caution, it's, I know you notice it's in yellow caution on the left column. Um, that deserves an alarming situation. It certainly deserves a lot of attention. So we would, we would recommend maybe doing a rotor influence check immediately? Immediate yeah, action, it? absolutely. Do a rotor influence check, separate between the rotor and the stator, correlate with online testing if, if at all possible. If you can get some online data. But what they did decide to do is they knew this was an issue, so they decided to increase the frequency of testing. And that's something that we do recommend. A good recommendation, yes. So we can see here as we go the next six months and then six months, we can start to see average inductance trending higher. And that is a very intriguing number. Average inductance doesn't get looked at a lot, but it is a very key indicator for what's going on inside the motor, and specifically rotor. And so we think that's a there's the reason why that's going up is possibly permeability changes. Correct. The the basically the average inductance, if you look at a three phase motor, is the overall average of the three inductance measurements. Now those change with rotor position because of the magnetic fields. But what can happen is as rotor bar degradation occurs, the reflected impedance of the rotor onto the stator changes the permeability of the stator and thereby change in the average inductance. Okay. So we go through in uh, um, July of 2013, we get our final tests there. Also, we have some other things going on with this motor. Yeah, that's not an ideal polarization index test. Even though it clears the IEEE minimum of, you know, for a random wound coil, it should be around 100 meg. Um, even though it does that, it's erratic and it's relatively flat, indicating contamination of some level. So we have a couple things going on with this motor. So we will uh, go proceed further and, and now at this time we're going to do a rotor influence check following the immediate action they do a, a rotor influence check and this really starts to muddy the water a little bit right now we've got separation in the phases which starts to lean us towards the stator or a severe eccentricity but that increasing average inductance is a real key because it because you're not regardless of, of an eccentricity or stator windings increasing average inductance should not occur it'll either be stable or it'll drop over time with with degradation in the motor in this situation it's going up which absolutely focuses our attention back to the rotor so the decision was made upon all that information that was collected is let's send this motor off to be repaired or send it to a shop to be evaluated. And the first thing they did was a single phase test. Can you explain that a little bit? So the single phase test, very popular at the motor shop area, they basically energize one of the three phases. And by doing that, it creates magnetic fields within the motor. And then they manually rotate the rotor and measure the current going in and out of that single phase of the stator. If a rotor is perfectly healthy, they expect no more than about 5% deviation in that current going in and out of that single phase of the stator. But in this situation, you know, we're ranging from 6 to 85, which is around what? So if we're thinking 5% of 60 amps, you're talking 3 amp swing. We right. have 15 amps, so we're much higher than that. Yeah, up, to, up even to 25 amps. So we're, up, we're all over 40%, and which is a severe indication. Any, anybody seeing that is going to, you know, raise the flag. All right, so that's one test that they perform. The next one is a magnetic particle inspection test. Can you explain this a little bit to us? 
this is a, I really like this test because it's very visual normally, unless you have such a bad problem. So the, what they do is they basically se separate the rotor from the stator. They, they basically put a coil, a magnetic coil, on the, the rotor, which induces current flow into the rotor bars. Well, the mag particle paper has small little pieces of magnetics you know, in, within the paper that float around. They're going to naturally collect around the rotor bars if they're conducting current. Well, I don't see a lot of dark bars running through that paper, do you? No. So this is showing another test showing us that well, we're not getting the type of current flow through these rotor bars that one would expect. We pull the motor, and wow, that's uh, quite an impressive look at this this motor rotor here. It's a lot of heat, a lot of uh, even the, the slots on the rotor, you know, the bars themselves are starting to separate because of the heat, the, you know, the temperature of the current flowing through the tips of the laminations. Uh, this is really bad to the point where it's almost like is the is the shorting ring at the end the aluminum shorting ring You know going to start to separate from the rotor completely and you can kind of see all the individual laminations Those are designed to be insulated from each other. So there's not supposed to be current flow So the current is kind of flowing over that and that's right. why it's charring correct Well, you remember we also talked about lubrication. Well, this is clearly uh, excess lubrication here. I would say we found the source. We have found the source and even closer view we can see that this uh, the the roller element bearing is full oh, of yeah. lubrication. You know they say overbearing, over greasing kills more than under greasing. So we found our two culprits so we know we have a bad rotor. So if this motor had failed while in process we're talking 16 hours to it's in a difficult location so about 16 hours of lost production which that's why that number is pretty high in an automotive uh, manufacturing facility your cars are coming off that line every couple minutes if you're losing 16 hours that's why that number at 350,000 is is pretty significant 26 of the 57 bars were broken and like we said earlier there's no replacement this motor is 30 years old so let's look at the post repair and that looks pretty good that's, that's good. as close to a perfect as you can Very get uh, it's obviously the repair job is good i would say it's certainly indicative of, a, of even a rewind on the stator and this is the healthy insulation profile afterwards and it's went from where we're at 400 mega ohm to we're now in the right. gig ohm range it looks like uh, great great improvement on that so Moving forward here, we come to the end of this case study, and as, as always, we like to, we're always thanking you for your time that you've given to us and the information that you've provided us that we can share with the rest of the uh, individuals who watch our presentations. Until we see you next time, you stay safe and have a great day.